me know when you're ready. And I'm ready whenever you are. Let's go ahead and get started. Okay. I will now call to order the March 21st, 2024 meeting of the Salem Historic Landmarks Commission. Will the reporter please take roll call? Commissioner Kurtiman is absent. Um, Commissioner Inman? Here. Commissioner uh, Commissioner McGlinty Timbrook? Present. Commissioner Morris? Here. Uh, Commissioner Strong? Or, or yeah. Commissioner Strauss? Here. Commissioner Weathers? Here. Commissioner Zimmerman? Here. And Commissioner Kayser? Here. Uh, we have form. Excellent. Thank you. All righty. The commission will now hear testimony from the public concerning the items not on the agenda. Is there anyone wishing to speak at this time? Okay, great. I don't think anybody raised their hand. All right. We will now consider the approval of the minutes. Um, may I please have a motion to approve the minutes? I will move to approve the minutes as written. Second. All right. Moved by Commissioner Tiffrock and seconded by Commissioner Inman. Are there any uh, questions or issues? Commissioner Zimmerman? Uh, yeah, it has me down to a voting yes to approve the uh, January 2024 minutes and I actually arrived after the uh, approval of minutes. All right. Excellent. Are we able to change that now? Yes, I fixed yes. that this morning when I noticed. Okay. All righty. Are there any other adjustments? Okay, I think that I'm going to go ahead and vote to approve with the uh, recommended change from Commissioner Zimmerman. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? All right, the minutes have passed. All righty, uh, next up on the agenda is going to be our public hearing. I will now open the public hearing for historic review case number. Let's get my paper here. HIS 24 03 for 460 Bush Street Southeast. Would the recorder please read the hearing procedure statement into the record? This is a public hearing to consider case number HIS 24 03 for property located at 460 Bush Street Southeast. The criteria applicable to this hearing are listed in Salem Revised Code Chapter 230.065 General Guidelines for Historic Contributing Resources. Failure to raise an issue prior to the close of the public hearing with statements or evidence sufficient to afford the Historic Landmarks Commission and the parties an opportunity to respond to the issue precludes appeal to the hearings officer on that issue. A similar failure to raise constitutional issues relating to proposed conditions of approval precludes an, an action for damages in circuit court. Prior to the conclusion of the hearing, any participant may request an opportunity to present additional evidence or testimony. The Historic Landmarks Commission will then either continue the public hearing or leave the record open for at least seven days. Okay, perfect. Uh, are there any conflicts of interest or ex parte contacts that any commissioner would like to declare at this time? Oh, okay, perfect. And for the record, Commissioner Strong has just arrived. Okay, perfect. Uh, now we are moving on to, did you want to declare any conflicts of interest or ex parte? Okay, great. Uh, Commissioner Strong says no. So we'll go ahead and move on to the staff presentation. Good evening. I'm Jake Morris, Historic Preservation Planner for the City of Salem. I'd like to enter the staff report, its attachments, and all public testimony into the public record. This property uh, at 460 Bush Street Southeast is located and is a contributing resource to the Gaiety Hill Bush Pastures Park Historic District. Uh, a little history about the property. This house was constructed, was constructed around 1920 as a two-story T-shaped wood structure with gable and continuous shed roof for a second story. 
Features include box eaves with weatherboard siding and plain trim around the windows and doors, circular arched entrance. A rear addition was added around 1950. Building permits reveal that there were additional alterations completed in the 1970s and 1980s, at which time the house was clad in vinyl siding and most windows on secondary elevations were replaced with vinyl or aluminum units. Uh, this resource is recorded as historic contributing to Salem's Gaiety Hill, which which is Pasture Park Historic District. And the image you see there is from the District National Register nomination. It's taken 40 years, two months today to the to the day, uh, back in 1984. Um, interesting history. There was not a lot of extensive documentation of this, the history of this property. Um, one one notable thing is in 1945, the Capitol Journal reported that Corporal Will McCleary, who lived at this property, serving as the 35th Infantry Division in France during World War II, supplemented the rations for his division in a unique way. It reported he was out fishing when he sighted deer swimming, threw a chain about his antlers, blackjacked it, and hauled it ashore to salvage some venison, which is... This is the first time I've heard that type of uh, building history. Um, a little background about the property uh, in, in this case. On November 10th, 23, the applicant contacted staff to inquire about Salem's review process for alterations to the exterior of the existing historic house at 460 Bush Street, Southeast. Historic preservation staff provided an overview of the historic design review requirements as well as land use requirements. The applicant submitted for a building permit on November 29th. In December, the applicant also submitted mechanical, plumbing, and electrical permits, began work on the interior of the structure. The applicant also began construction on a retaining wall on the north end of the site along Rift Street Southeast. After a complaint was received on January 12th, 2024, compliance staff opened a compliance case and contacted the applicant stating that all work needed to stop until the appropriate historic design review approval rules could be obtained. On January 18th of this year, the applicant submitted materials for a major historic design review for a proposal to rehabilitate the exterior of the house, including removing vinyl siding and repairing underlying cedar siding and replacing any radiated areas in kind repairing historic windows and door on the north facade primary elevation and replacing existing vinyl windows on secondary elevations with mostly wooden windows and doors and constructing a gray granite faced wall on the north front on the north yard in front of the house the application was deemed complete for processing on february 28th 2024 oh. The, the, we'll start at the front with the wall. The applicant is requesting approval to install granite clad retaining wall. It's proposed approximately two feet in height. The design features a central stair opening flanked by a low wall with returns and all of the wall ends are terminated by columns. Uh, they're proposed to be three foot six inches tall. Uh, the construction method is concrete masonry unit core with two inch thick granite veneer and capstones that are four inch thick. The stone for the wall is gray granite in a regular shape. The coarse stone is two inches thick. Capstone as mentioned before, four inches thick. The design of the wall is uh, similar to one the applicant had recently uh, completed in Portland. This is an example here. If, if you look on the left, that is the Free rehabilitation for that entire property. And then you see the retaining wall, um, the, the masonry pattern, the stone material are, are proposed to be similar. The lighting will be different, but those are generally the locations of, of where they were proposed to be the lighting on this project as well. And then the primary of the house itself um, is not proposed to be altered except for you know, removing the vinyl siding, repairing the underlying cedar siding. Um, there is some alterations to the lighting. Um, the, they had non-historic fixtures and they want to install the 1920 era reproduction lighting uh, in general locations of existing fixtures and also, as mentioned previously, atop the wall columns. 
Um, they're described as 1920s English style reproduction lanterns. Uh, if you see the, the arched main entrance, if you look closely on, on the left and the right are the locations of where the, um, the uh, lanterns would be on the house itself. So one on each side of, of that main entrance there is the, what would be visible from the right of way. However, no exact specifications were provided, so staff recommends a condition that the applicant submit final design specifications for that light, those lighting fixtures on the primary facade and the retaining wall to the HPO at the time of building permit submittal, just to make sure that they are reviewed and historically appropriate. Um, and then there are you know, a lot of commonalities in the, the all the secondary elevations. So this is an example of the replacement windows proposed for most most of the windows on the secondary elevation, um, and and most of the secondary elevations have been altered pretty extensively, both in the size of the windows themselves and also the characteristics of the, of the installed units. Um, you can see at the left is the it's a the proposed uh, kind of. General window is uh, Marvin Ultimate Series wood clad uh, window units, and you can, if you'll notice, the distinctive nine light uh, light configuration there. And then to the right is is an example of the the uh, historic windows themselves that are on the front, but those those, as mentioned previously, will be retained. Um, and then just going around the property, we'll look at the east elevation, um, the, the, as, as mentioned previously, the, pro the, the uh, property owner had, had started some work. A lot of that, the most visible was removal of the uh, vinyl siding in most of the areas. So you can see here is the kind of existing, there's only one door on that and it's, it was a steel door. And you can see in this image, the vinyl siding had been removed and that was, at the time the work stopped. And then the proposal for this one is um, to install on the first floor two lights with that, that similar uh, fenestration design as we mentioned previously um, and remove that non-historic door. Um, and then on the rear of the property, the, what we call the, um, the south elevation, uh, since there's no alleyway, this elevation is not visible from the right of way, um, and it is the most altered elevation. Um, it was during the 1970s er and 80s era, judging both from the, the amount of permits uh, gotten during that time and also the, the characteristics of the windows that were in place at the beginning of the project. Um, and there were also uh, sliding doors, you know, uh, large you know, two pane sliding doors. Um, the only remaining historic windows on the south elevation are on the second floor dormer, and you can see that bay of windows there. Um, those are proposed to be kept, uh, just rehabilitated and kept. Um, as you can see here, the fenestration pattern is regular. The windows don't share proportions with each other or with any really identifiable design arrangement. Uh, they also tend to be wider than tall, which, which is of a late, later era. Um, the detail on bottom right shows the leftmost window assembly. After the vinyl removed, you can see an example. What looks like shutters there is actually OSB fill, oriented strand board fill that, that was used when they put a smaller window in, into what was historically probably a bay of several windows. And then, Proposal for the south elevation, um, as in the other siding, existing vinyl siding be removed, cedar siding be retained with damage areas to be replaced in kind with matching painted cedar. And then the trim is to match the front elevation in profile and material. Uh, the proposal with the windows is to replace the non-historic windows with new wooden windows, uh, similar to those that one shown before on most of them, uh, covering existing openings and creating new openings. Uh, the proposed dining room window, which you can see the kind of larger one there on the gable end, uh, is, is, is 
propose to have English diamond pattern glazing instead of, uh, of <clears throat> instead of flat glazing. Uh, the second floor dormer windows are to be retained. The um, proposed fenestration pattern has a, a much more defined arrangement with regular spacing. The window heights are all a consistent <laughs> um, And then the existing non-historic sliding door will be replaced with two other doors. Um, if you look on the very right hand corner is a double door. And then at the left of that addition is, is a single door. Both of those are, are proposed to use a, a wooden Simpsons uh, model 7002 exterior fur French doors. And an example is visible there. Um, the glass will be a clear glass for all, all three of those door units. And then the west elevation, um, and you can see there the it had vinyl siding and has been partially removed. And you can see that in the bottom right, where it stands today, where some of that had been replaced. Um, the existing binding sidle has been removed, um, all to be replaced in kind of matching painted cedar, turned to mass historic and profile material. Uh, the existing windows are currently all vinyl replacement. And then if you look at the left is an image of the west elevation that prior to any work. Um, and then yep, that's, that's all of that as it stands now. And then uh, the proposed west elevation, um, as we said before, same treatments for the siding and, and trim. Um, the Changes to the fenestration window patterns, um, and, and there there are are two windows that are for what will be bathrooms. You can see those shorter windows; those are different than the the typical kind of uh, replacement window that are proposed because there are bathrooms on both of those, and they're proposing to use the same trim, but the windows will be shorter and the window, but the window heights will match the historic window heights. Um, and then also on this side is where the proposal is to install two uh, HVAC units, um, Liberty ASX S6. Um, those are toward the rear portion of the west elevation. If you see uh, to the top right, the that that dark area that is, that is uh, shaded in, that is the general location and the scale of those provided by the applicant. Um, the units are, are relatively narrow, 36 inches long, 27 inches high, 15 inches wide, and then they're proposing screening in front of those. And then for our, our findings under this application is being evaluated under section 230.65, general guidelines for historic contributing resources. Staff recommends the HLC determine that all guidelines except F are either met without qualification or not applicable in this case. Guideline F states, additions and alterations to a historic resource shall be designed and constructed to minimize changes to the historic resource. As, as mentioned previously, the applicant is proposing several alterations replacing the existing window openings, replacing non-historic windows throughout the resources. Additionally, the applicant is proposing removing existing door opening, window opening on the west facade. Um, all, these, all of these window and door opening changes are, however, located on secondary facade you know, elevations that generally impact non-historic features, which minimizes both the visual impact and then also uh, impact on material and design of the re overall resource. The proposed wall in the uh, front, the retaining wall, does not cause any physical changes to the house, and staff for concerns regarding the design material are limited to column height and wall placement, and those will be that will be outlined in the summary of the public comments. The application proposes to install new exterior lighting on the wall columns and replace light fixtures on either side of the main entry. The fixtures are proposed to be 1920s era English style reproduction lanterns, but the exact appearance and scale are unknown. Since the figures are an alternate, fixtures are an alteration, 
to better meet guideline F, staff recommends the HLC approve the proposal with the following condition. The applicant shall submit final design specification of the exterior lighting on the primary facade and retaining wall to the historic preservation officer at the time of building permit submittal. And then we received testimony during the comment period. Uh, we did not receive any public comments in the at the time of this, the report, we did not receive neighborhood association comments. Um, we did not receive public agency comments. Uh, we did receive uh, comments from city departments, which I'll summarize, we received fire, building and safety, public works and planning. Um, the building and safety uh, indicated the stone retaining wall will require engineer design and separate permits. The fire department has no specific concerns. However, egress and compliance with applicable fire code will need to be demonstrated prior to issues, issuance of the building permit. Public works that reviewed the plans and cautioned that the retaining wall must not be located in public right of way unless otherwise permitted through a revocable encroachment permit per SRC 76.160, which must be issued by the public works department prior to any work commencing within the right of way and at time of building permit. And planning division reviewed the proposal and commented, commented that the wall's column design exceeded the 30 inches in height and would not comply with SRC 800.55, which states fences and walls within a front yard abutting a street shall not exceed a maximum height of four feet when located within 20 feet of the property line abutting the street, provided, however, within 10 feet of the property line abutting the street, any portion of the fence or wall above 30 inches in height shall be less than 25% opaque when viewed at any angle at a point 25 feet feet away from the fence or wall. And based on all of this information, staff is provided to uh, develop the, the following recommendations. Uh, the first condition is that the applicant shall modify the retaining wall design so the can, columns are no more than 30 inches in height. The second condition is that the applicant shall obtain a public works revocable encroachment permit per SRC 76. 160 prior to the issuance of any city permits authorizing work on the property. And the third condition is that the applicant shall submit final design specification of the exterior lighting on the primary facade and retaining wall to the historic preservation officer at the time of building permits middle. And with that, I conclude my presentation. All right, perfect. Um, and just for the record, uh, right before the meeting, we did get one comment from the Neighborhood Association. So I think everybody's got a copy of that on their desk. Um, do any of the commissioners have questions for staff? I've got to take a chance. Um, on the window openings, um, I wanted to just clarify a couple of things. So it sounds like they're going to be changing the size of the windows um, on those that they're going to be replacing. Yeah, yes, it, on a, almost all of them, they're in, um, they're not replacing the not you know any historic windows that I, that, that was they're on the buildings currently. Um, most of the windows were kind of nineteen, judging from the characteristics of them, I'd say they're nineteen seventies eighties slider windows. Okay. Um, Mostly vinyl. Okay, so um, the new size doesn't necessarily represent the historic size of the windows. It's mostly just That's what correct. is there. And let me let me go back just a little bit. Sorry, we do have an example of. We know at least in some cases, one of the things that you know prior to the stop work that's beneficial that the vinyl was removed is that. For our building diagnostic purposes, let's just see examples of of where maybe there was historically a larger opening. <laughs> so if you look on on this image on the on the right bottom there, what looks like shutters there was actually part of a larger opening that was probably when that shutter when that slider window went in. You know, it it looks like it would likely be consistent with the bay of two or three windows that would be more 
it's more of a kind of a portrait versus a landscape orientation. And I imagine there's probably not any historic photos to to mm -hmm. say. No, I'm afraid. I'm afraid we haven't discovered any. Okay. Okay. Great. That's a great clarification. Thank you. Um, I don't think I have any other questions. Does anybody else have any questions before we move on? Okay. Great. Um, I will go ahead and call now for the applicant's testimony. I, though I don't know if the applicant is here. Okay, it doesn't seem like it. Um, all right, would the Neighborhood Association like to say anything? Okay, perfect. Um, so it looks like the Neighborhood Association is here. Um, I'm sure you know the drill, but please state your name and address for the record and your testimony is limited to 10 minutes. Thank you very much. Can you hear me? Um, I'd like to commend Dr. Morris for an outstanding presentation and high quality review. It's most impressive, Doctor. Um, the comments we have are members of the SCAN Historic Preservation Arts and Gardens Committee have no objections. We commend the applicant for the use of the original cedar material. We concur, we concur with the project. One, two, three, to approval, recommended. The applicant and the HLC staff have done fine work. Thank you. Respectfully, John Christensen, Chair, Scan, Historic Preservation Arts. Excellent. Thank you. Does anybody have questions for the Neighborhood Association? All right. Thank you very much. Thank you. Okay, perfect. Um, are there any names on the sign up sheet? I don't know. Sit back over there. Okay, great. Thank you. Oh, perfect. All right. So it looks like John, you were signed up. So I think we're good. All right, is there anybody else who'd like to testify? Okay, great. Um, I think then we can go ahead and move on. Are there any additional questions for staff before we close the public hearing? This is our last chance to get more information, so. Okay, I think we're good. Um, I will now close the public hearing. No additional testimony will be accepted at this time without formally reopening the hearing. I will now call for a motion. I. <laughs> I move to approve with the uh, conditions assisted. Perfect. Like staff. Second. We have got a motion from Commissioner Timbrook and a second from Commissioner Kayser to move as staff recommends uh, to your motion. Well, I mean, they seem pretty straightforward. I think I appreciate the way the city staff works, the departments work together to uh, make sure that you know people are doing things and having the proper things in, in uh in order before they keep continue to move forward. Um, so we don't have retroactive approvals. So Mr. Kayser? Yeah, this is exactly what we want to have that. <laughs> Especially I noted the applicant said in their application they're fixing the rebuttal lane. Okay. Uh, which I appreciate. So yeah, kudos to them. Excited to see what it looks like. Yeah, I agree. I think it's nice to see some of the original um, features be restored on the house, like the um, cedar siding is going to be really great to see. And it seems like the windows are going to change, but it doesn't seem like we're doing any replacement or uh, a restoration necessarily of the original, just what had already been changed before in the 1980s. So, all right, perfect. Is there anybody else who'd like to say anything? Commissioner Strong. Yes. Is, have they given us any feedback or are there any lessons we can learn that would have about education and outreach that would have enabled them to know what to do without having to stop work? Um, I'm not sure. We could probably ask staff that question after the public hearing ends. Okay, great. Yeah, we can talk about that. Or is there a way to gather that? Okay. 
Okay, perfect. Um, we could probably add just a small item to the agenda to talk a little bit about um, what that might be. A good way to do that. We can, we can go ahead and add that, sure. Um, okay, great. Any other comments? All right. Um, I will now call for a vote. All of those in favor of approving as staff recommends, please say aye. Aye. Any opposed, please say nay. All right, the motion passes. Okay, so that is the end of our public hearing and we don't have any other public hearings on the agenda. Um, do we need to do like a formal uh, addition to the agenda or do you think we can just add a uh, nice question to the discussion item? Just discuss it. We'll okay, great. We'll just, we'll talk about it during the discussion items, perfect. All right, that moves us on to action items, which is a resolution, the initiation of the historic code amendments. I will turn it over to staff. Kimberly Fitzgerald, Historic Preservation Program Manager. So you do have a staff report in your on your desk or in your packet. Uh, I don't have a presentation for you today because we're not going to go through the specifics of the code amendment. It's, this action is just requesting you all to initiate our code amendments. So, um, and these are amendments to uh, Salem Revised Code 230, our historic chapter. And we're primarily focusing on the uh, amendments to address the security gates, which we're going to discuss here in a minute. But we're also going to bring back uh, in, um, not in April, but we can. <laughs> in May, um, some other sort of cleanup code amendments since we're going to be doing this anyway. So, do, do you have any questions before I turn? Okay, great. Um, any questions? If there's no questions, then I could probably hear a motion. I will Hilbert. move to approve uh, the resolution to initiate the adoption process for the historic code amendments for security gates and other language. All right, excellent. Second. Perfect. I have got a motion from Commissioner Timbrook and a second from Commissioner Inman to go ahead and approve HLC Resolution 24. 2024-01, excuse me. Uh, all right, any discussion? All right, then I'll go ahead and call for a vote. Oh, oh yeah, Joseph Moby. Okay, great. <laughs> I don't see any. I appreciate that, thank you. I don't see anybody who'd like to talk about the uh, initiation of the code amendment. Oh, John, would you like to speak on it? All right, please go ahead and uh, we already had your name and address, but just for the record, if you could restate, that'd be great. Hi, good evening again. My comment is an individual comment, not uh, a comment from the Historic Preservation Parks and Gardens Committee. I would recommend that you look beyond the historic that state, or excuse me, downtown historic district. We had a circumstance at 567 High Street where a six foot fence was put on the front or the exterior uh, along the street. It was in violation of the code. Uh, however, that section of the code was not brought forward. And uh, what I'm seeing now is a, a potential conflict on how to address walls, fences along the street and residential areas, as well as down to different, you know, site circumstance, but still a uh, serious visual and contextual challenge. A six foot fence on high street in a residential area, uh, speaking for myself, um, I wouldn't want to see it extended further down to the community down to the rest of the historic district on high street. It would take on the appearance of restoration. Thank you very much. Thank you for your comment. 
Um, are there any, is there anything else that the commissioners would like to discuss? Okay, perfect. Then I think we can go ahead and move to a vote. Uh, all in favor of uh, the initiation of code amend or resolution number 202401, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? Please say nay. All right. Uh, the resolution is passed. Excellent. That moves us on to discussion items. The first of which is the security uh, gates and fences updates. Um, do we have the presentation from staff? We're just chatting. Sure. Yeah, we can pull the website up. In our last meeting, we had, we had uh, discussed uh, outreach materials, that sort of thing, how, how best to convey uh, the character we want to see in storefronts. Um, uh, started with more aspects that are more applicable to print, but we, thanks to Zach and Kimberly's efforts, mainly did. did um, Translated that into a a what you know web page that that convey that same uh, information, and you can see here is a draft that has been working up. Uh, you know we have an example of the the uh, you know a, a typical 1920s type of storefront that really grabs your attention. I would say, um, and then you can also see. You know what what we mean by a storefront uh, that the different components of a historic storefront and then we're looking at the specifics of the proposed um you know changes to uh 230. um you can see here you know an example of specifications which would give the, the property owners an idea of the type of things they would need to submit that would be reviewable which will save them time and everyone time in, in during the process, um, you know, we want to see size, details, that sort of things. Um, and then also an idea of how it will be affixed, the scale, exactly where it is going to be in terms of installation. And then examples of different types that they're likely to run into when looking for, the, for this sort of feature. You know, you can see, you know, we, we, one of the things we wanted to focus on was what is site obscuring. To what extent, you know, or what's appropriate to, where is it appropriate to install versus not, and then some examples of what may or may not work for that. This is very similar to what we we proposed before, but a little more uh, polished in terms of examples. Um, and then we have links to, you know, uh, National Park Service guidance and that sort of thing. So it's, you know, most of what we do in some way, shape, or form is tracking Secretary of Interior standards for rehabilitation, which is typical of certified local governments like we are. Um, and then we had a little update in terms of, you know, talk to, uh, I think previously I said we had talked to Main Street had similar uh, feelings about making sure that was a limited type of, of um, you know, endeavor in terms of they didn't want every bay of a storefront to be something that looked locked down. And that was that was that was pretty much the consensus. Any of the meetings we did. The other thing is we did speak to fire, and their concerns in terms of alcoves and, and this type was mainly only if in the context of you know case by case if there was a fire access hookup or that sort of thing that would be you know captured in that alcove, then that would be a, a problem that would need to be addressed. But otherwise, they didn't have any any you know glaring concerns that would be that would you know cover the general proof of concept type of uh, work we're doing right now. And I think that gets us up to today. Great, excellent. Um, do we have any qu questions for staff? I've got a couple questions. 
Um, I am wondering if there were any, if you have any recommended like text changes from your discussions with the downtown organization or with fire, like are you recommending any additional criteria based on those conversations? We're not at this time because the feedback for that was kind of captured previously since it paralleled what we had did see. And you know, if anything, my, you know, minor typographical type of alterations, but nothing that would be substantive. Nothing substantial. Um, do we have any, uh, do you anticipate adding any additional or any additional text based on that? I guess I'm thinking about like the fire access. Like, are we thinking about adding anything that would say, you know, cannot block service access or something like that? I mean, theoretically, we could add that since it, it's not, doesn't really deal with historic visual character. Um, I don't, I don't know that we, it would be necessary because because you know it would be the type of thing to be captured in other aspects, like say there was some other aspect of code that would get okay. The, the what really wasn't tied to what we we're addressing in terms of the historic uh, visual character. Okay, perfect. And so I'll just yeah support that. So part of so a security gate would most likely require a permit, a building permit, and and fire would review as part of that. And so it wouldn't be we don't have the landmarks commission and SR. C230 doesn't have regulatory authority, so there's no code to hang our hat on other than, as Jake mentioned, design standards, but it's captured in there. Perfect, cool. Just wanted to make sure. Yeah, Commissioner Weathers. Just, you're not the only one asking questions. <laughs> I appreciate uh, it. I missed the downtown advisory board meeting when this was in there, and I feel terrible about that. But at that time, did Kimberly, I'm sorry, did Cherie uh, mention anything about that these would be covered under the strategic projects grant here did that get brought up at all and my point is it's almost a segue into the next thing of making sure everyone's you know interdepartmentally cooperating since it's a website and that can be changed later if there was maybe a little blurb or link that by the way there's a way to help pay for this yeah. i feel like that helps when someone goes oh this is so onerous and follow these rules and then we follow up with oh but it can be helped and so that would be my suggestion or question if that's a possibility. Yeah, so yeah, you Urban always has money. We have our well, I shouldn't say that. We had a little bit of money, but that's a good idea. So we can talk with Urban about making that link to the Right. Make yeah. sure you yeah. perfect. Okay, great. Um, are there any other comments or questions about the text? It sounds like we're getting pretty close to kind of the final aspect or the final, I don't know, product here. Okay, great. Well, I think to sort of sum up our discussion, um, our one suggestion was to maybe add a little bit of information to the educational website about the opportunities provided by the Downtown Advisory Board. Um, and we don't uh, have any concerns about adding additional language because it seems like uh, things like, um, you know, fence height or uh, the fire access is covered by other code sections, so we don't need to worry about that. Anybody say something else? Okay, great. I think that's it. Do you guys have questions, more questions for us? No, thank you. Okay, great. Ooh, perfect. Um, then I think we can go ahead and move on to our next discussion item. All right, the next discussion item is going to be the work plan assignment updates. Yeah, but so, yeah, sorry. So this is just an opportunity if you've done stuff and things, and I'm looking at Chris Morris, who seems to be doing lots of stuff and things. Um, <laughs> just share what you've been doing. You know, the, the well, you can share if you. What are you well, <laughs> mystery. I know. You can talk about all, like, Bush House if you want. You can talk about changing yeah. support, that sort yes. of thing. Uh, so, um, Bush House Museum, we have been working with them for the last 18 months. They're shifting their um, approach to how the museum is 
representing the history. They're doing more of a restorative history with that house. Um, they're also bringing in a more contemporary gallery on the second floor of the house. Um, those things have gone outside of permitting. So we're getting them back into a position where they are permitted to have um, concerts. They're doing concert series in the house. They're doing lecture series. They have um, some diamond events in the house and have gallery on the second floor of the house. So it's um, a lot going on. Oh yeah, yep. I'm glad that we did. Uh, glad we can move that forward and get it uh, aligned with the new, also increasing leases, right? So some yep. of this is being driven by the leasing structure for the, right. for the city. Yes. Jake is really good. Yeah, and then we have Ching Ming coming up, and um, I'm not sure what's happening. Well, but I want, yeah, I, I don't know if you want to speak to it, but, and I didn't bring anything to share, but maybe next, next, we'll, time, yeah, um, we next time. Yeah, so um, the Chinese community is really excited about building something new there. Andy, I don't know if you were part of this conversation last year, if you overheard them. Uh, so while uh, myself, as an archaeologist and historian, love that we're reusing the original, they're like, it's broken and makes us sad. <laughs> so they want they want a new one. So um, Chris and his firm have graciously worked with the Chinese community to come up with a conceptual design. And so we're very early on in the process. This will eventually come to you guys because it's in the Pioneer Cemetery, which is National Register listed. Uh, but just wanted to give a shout out to Chris. Yeah, it'd be great to excavate the existing oh, yeah. shrine. To get down to the base of it? Yeah, the base of it. I am. Four feet below the okay. um, Yeah. Right. Anyway. It, yeah, it'd be cool to get there. It's really sad that it got buried. I know. Also Spanish. So again, it's like a theme of restorative history. It is, yeah. Oh, no, there's a lot of that around. It's been buried. So it's great yeah. to be a part of That's all I'm, I'm not going to call on any to you. To call. <laughs> <laughs> Do any of the other committees have any updates to provide? We did an email exchange on the survey committee about um, some properties that have reached out um, to do uh, to do the um, local register nomination. And I volunteered to help with the park nomination. So I think that will be um, that will be fun. And we're, I'm still working on the school. I'm hoping to have that done by the end of the month. So we're, we're getting close on that. And uh, there's a few other properties that um, I think will be really cool, uh, like the Dairy Frank House. I would really like love to help with that. I'm not sure if I would be able to do all of it, but I would be happy to you know, support or help as we need to. But if folks are interested in kind of covering those other houses, that would be another like, great thing to do. Mark just wrote about it. Right. Yeah, for the uh, newsletter. Great. Well, then we're already started. <laughs> <laughs> and I think then the only other thing I, I just want to mention before we move on is um, I always forget about this. May is Historic Preservation Month. I don't know. I'm sorry. Aren't I sad? <laughs> <laughs> like, we like, we should do something. Will we give up on the chair? Uh huh. Any maybe we'll plan ahead for next year. It's just it's just because it's March and I'm like we're not having a difficult thing. So if anyone's super inspired and wants to play something, like I keep staring at Kara. I mean it's yeah. all handy, but can we like find something like interactive on the interwebs? I phone you. <laughs> she has see when you have an idea. Yeah. <laughs> yes, Jeff, or go go. But he's just so involved what? in our social media that I you know. He has to do the radio show and the newspaper. <laughs> we support you if you have an idea. Like, I don't, but I'm just sitting here thinking <laughs> like, about social media. No, it's just a social, you know, social media that we've got all these different things, like you know, know. kind of like is there something kind of interactive that you know, we don't have something, you know, 
Physical. Like an event that we yeah, we don't have like do. a, something physical or whatever, but is there at least something that we could throw out? Or could we tag on to somebody else? Right. It's already doing it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. <laughs> Many hands being like Exactly. Yeah. It's a good idea. I don't, I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, <laughs> That's so funny. <laughs> I know. I know. <laughs> I'm wondering, I don't know, how's our, like, how's the toolbox grant doing? Are we doing, like, well with applications? Is, like, money doing well? We have money in the farm. Oh, okay. I was wondering, because <laughs> I think it would be, um, it's, just, it's such a great program for local homeowners. I'm wondering if we could, like, highlight some of those projects, but I don't want to uh, walk that. I was just saying, exactly. Like, just some, you know, just, like, Something just to push forward, you know. I mean, we don't have to like do something specific, but just to you know throw things out. Like, hey, it's Historic Preservation Month, by the way. Here's so some Caleb has project. Some, has some yeah. Things so maybe feed stuff to Andy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh, let's, let's put down Jennifer for now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Do we have like an oversized check? Yeah. So I hand out a big huge check. <laughs> Did you do that one? I have this memory agent. I have an oversized one. Yeah. I want them with a whole life. You've wanted one with a whole life. That would be good for you. Oh, we got to do it for you. Thank you. Don't have to advantage. Should ask. We only want to edit. Oh, okay. Let's put it in. Then we just voted that Jennifer would take it. Okay. Jennifer's going to think of... Uh, a program highlight, and we're going to share it on the web. Just for the story. Okay. They're probably doing stuff. Okay. They're probably. Maybe we could get on that main Yeah. Even if we like to promote it. Hashtag Jennifer Hashtag Jennifer. Right. Right. Zachary right. so. has something to say. Yeah. Um, we do have our photo contest. It is currently open and we're accepting submissions and that will go through. Um, so we will discuss that for in for Historic Preservation Month. Um, that will be happening. We will also probably do our awards that month as well. See, he's more excited. Look, we're doing stuff. We, I'm just saying there are things that are on the docking. They're not doing nothing. We're gonna be. Are we gonna be voting for the awards at that meeting? Yeah, you will be okay. voting on the awards and the photo contest awards at the May meeting. Um, assuming we have submissions, we don't have any yet, but um, but those are open and live, and we're we're ready for them. Um, and then in your regards to the toolbox grant, um, we. We have a few for this um, month, but it could be our next or our, this cycle. Our next cycle will open in June, so sharing them in May could be a good promotion for like, hey, it opens next month. You can uh, sign up for that. So, is there um, maybe like a I don't know, like an email newsletter or something that you could send to the commissioners, and we could maybe forward it about the um, photo contest? Um, there was discussion of designing a flyer. I have not had time to design said flyer, but okay. um, it's the city update. It's the city update, okay. And there is a news, um, there is a newsletter or news article online that you could there are links think, for, yeah. but um, we it's it's just text with one photo from last year. But we could, I could make like a flyer. Yeah, or just or something we could like post online or something. I don't know. It'd be nice to. I would just steal from the scene. Yeah, yeah. What's it called? Yep. Yeah. Does the winner get an oversized check? We can have a hashtag. We gotta get him an oversized check. What would the check say? Charles is awesome. To your point of restoring and. I get a million emails from them, yeah. and May is Modernism Month or something. Yeah, yeah. So they, usually they have a lot. Okay. Oh, you know it's modern. They're this building, that right? Yeah, it is. <laughs> that might be an interesting. Uh, you know? Jerry Frank. Yeah, Jerry Frank has. That looks like Charles has things that you can do from that too. I guess, yeah, yeah. yeah. Just send it to me before this. <laughs> like I said, hashtag. hashtag. So I, I will. I will say that um, you asked about SHPO. So SHPO used to, if you remember the historic preservation fair in front of the Capitol, they have asked us if we want to take it on 
right. That's what I said. Yeah. However, it used to be, did anyone used to go? I know you, right? I did. Did you did. I know. Kara, why don't you share what it is real quick? Oh gosh, I haven't finished it. I know, but you started. The yeah, it was it. We got, let's see, uh, from what I remember, other agencies, all state agencies, local governments. Um, I think we had the nurse. People came, though. Like they the did. People came just from a small all little. We got some tents, tables, and just we're sharing about resources. Um, gosh, it was probably like maybe pretty small. Down in, down in the uh, capital. Very, although that's all. That's true. Maybe that's why it's not that people have. Okay, no, but well, there are some like tribal. They were like yeah, some of yeah, the we, tribes were there. Had grown. Yeah, they actually got COVID. Yeah, pretty big. What I think it first started with like for sure. There was a tank. <laughs> the last one. Yeah. <laughs> you know. Yeah. <laughs> and also a big uh, tribal community. That's. A, now that I say those words together, that's <laughs> <laughs> I can see why they're trying to offer it. It was a lot of work just to make that that is really four hours. Yeah. Hours. yeah. Okay. So um I'm hearing that we are gonna do the photo contest, we're going to be voting. Do you need like um, nominations for the awards before the next meeting? Submission. So, yeah, submissions. Yeah, so we need photo contest submissions. Um, in the past, staff will recommend some awards, but um, if have commissioners to. have ideas, okay. we would prefer that those come from you. Um, but if you don't have any, staff will find some recommendations. Okay, so it's so a little bit of homework is to think of us as we'd like the nomination for the awards. Um, well, a reminder on the awards, there's the... Yeah, there's the... So there's the Virginia Maxwell, so that's no. for her Senate. Virginia Green. Virginia Green. Then <laughs> oh, Maxwell. Ben Maxwell. <laughs> <laughs> Virginia Maxwell. Virginia Green. You were with me. Yeah, Ben Maxwell is for... Uh, 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 restoration project. We yeah. generally do one for residential and one for commercial, but we're not required to. We've done one for public. Yeah. And there's also the uh, the new landscape award, and uh, that's for historic landscapes. And then the chair gets to give an award for whatever you want. Okay. I will definitely think about it in a piece of work. That I need to remember. Okay, great. Um, so homework is to think about folks we'd like to nominate, maybe projects that have been really successful over the last year. Um, and then we're going to get like something that we can email around for the photo contest and hopefully get some submissions. And then uh, Jennifer is going to take a look at a program highlight that we're going to do on the Instagram feed during the month of May. Does that sound good? Okay, great. Thanks a lot. Good job, everybody. Um, anything else that we'd like to talk about under work plan assignment update? Do any of the other committees have anything they'd like to talk about? Okay, great. I think then we can move on to the newsletter. Sure. Um, so our next newsletter should theoretically go out next week. I am, uh, I've only received one article so far. Um, so I am. I sent you mine right before the meeting. Oh, okay. I have the photo okay. and a narrative. So I'll email it to you tomorrow. I, I'm, I'm going to be in Canada tomorrow, so um, it won't go out tomorrow. But yeah, if you can uh, send it to me before I get back from vacation, um, it will go out next week, probably near the end of the week is the plan. Um, and uh, then it's time to start thinking about a theme for um, our summer newsletter, um, which is usually uh, the things that are featured in the photo contest. So at the photo contest, people will say, that's exciting, I want to write about it. Um, regardless if it's a winner or not, it's just anything that was submitted in the photo contest is usually the theme. However, we can change it up um, if anyone has a different theme they'd like to write about for the summer one, which would go out in June. I think it's nice to be able to highlight the photos, either the winners or just photos that we liked. So that seems like a good idea to me. Um, so I'll we'll 
won't probably won't discuss the newsletter again until we have photos then, but. Okay, great. Okay, um, and then one other, does anybody have out anything else on the newsletter? Okay, um, so one last thing we wanted to kind of add on as a discussion item was the question from Commissioner Strong. Do you want to kind of pose your question about the education? Um, I was just going back to my notes about what people wish they had known before they started. And this sounds like this was a situation where someone probably wished they knew before their work got stopped, because that's a very expensive thing to happen with modeling. Um, and I wonder, can we, you know, has anybody asked them if they said anything, um, what can we learn to this that we might be able to incorporate to our So we can certainly ask the applicant. He wasn't, he didn't come tonight, but we can certainly follow up and um, I don't know if Jake wants to jump in or not, but um, I think that this particular applicant doesn't, shouldn't be a reason, but he doesn't live in Salem. And so the face-to-face the -face communication, we only were able to have one time. And I do think that that's a challenge um, if you're not um, able, it, it depends on the communication, the communication method, I think, but my, experience with this particular person he did best when he was with us you know and it's been difficult to coordinate that um we did as jake mentioned in the staff report um he did reach out by email so and i was actually on green leave at the time and jake hadn't quite started yet so it's just like a series of unfortunate events anyways um <laughs> and so um you know, and we've been working with him to get him back on the right track. So I think, yeah, it's certainly a good idea to follow up and, and ask him, you know, lessons in work what could have worked better. But I think in my experience, this kind of thing, paper and email is one thing, but that developing a personal relationship really is the best thing to do with someone, especially if someone's new. So it's not like we're this baseless. Exactly. I, I mean, know. I know that I have offloaded all of my many, many complaints up to you. And, um, I'm just guessing that, you know, that, that's that's how I've learned is what do I do in this situation? Yeah. And um, being able know, to pick up the phone or stop by and be right. Well, so when someone buys a new property, there's a fake, right? And they so, get a letter. And so they get a letter from you. And that's their official notice. Essentially, that's their heads up. You're going to have some issues you need to plan around, right? Okay. And so, yeah, maybe asking them what could have made Do they print it on red paper? I mean, what would have made it? No. <laughs> he knew enough to reach out and email. Enough to reach and out. I think okay. that came okay. from that, that letter. But I also think, like, we had talked about this we talk about this topic. like I feel when we were discussing and updated the preservation plan and then when we had our enforcement subcommittee I think we talked about that relationship building and the doing the equivalent of like a welcome basket or something and again having that personal having someone go and talk to him and I know we don't have staff have, have capacity to do that but and then I'm looking at John, like the Neighborhood Association. I think that's one of the recommendations we have as well. Is, you know, connect with your Neighborhood Association because, like, you know, they have built that relationship too, so that you know they're not feeling alone. Oh, that's hard. Like they're, they're also an out of they, if they're an out of state or out of town. Owner, makes it harder. It makes it a little bit yeah more difficult. And that's it is. There's a certain amount of due diligence still on the part. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Should be, yeah. Yeah. Like, I don't know this case was somebody out of town. I'm guessing not there. They're selling it. Yeah, this is an You still, you still should know what you're getting into. Yes, you should. Yeah, just like anybody else, you could be buying non-historic property and have it up the lake. So anything else, you would have to be aware of that too. But yeah, if we're able to talk with them, that would be yeah. Fun story. First time I met Kimberly was because I bought a local landmark. 
And I didn't know I couldn't do anything to the windows. I'm not looking at you. are on the commission. But to looking at the timeline here, you know, they contacted you before and then went through. I, my question is, how often is the stop work order? How often? Yeah, does this happen that often? Or is this guy just, he missed the mark? Are you finding so often you're like, hey guys, you got to go back and do this? Yeah, again. so in residential, in residential not, not yeah. Residential. So for historic, so historic's a little bit different than the rest of our program at the city, in that typically we, um, historic preservation staff are given 30 days to try to get voluntary compliance before we bring in compliance officers and then start the whole stop this part. And Again, it was a series of a, a of just because I was out on bereavement leave and Jake had just started, it went to our compliance officer sooner, I think, than we normally. But that that didn't change the actual process once it gets into the queue. We still start preservation stuff. We're very involved in trying to get back on track. So that is and the, the correct term, and I'm not as familiar as I thought should be but it's a correction notice first and then it goes to stop work so it's not immediate right and so um and jake i don't know if you have more information off the top of your head but uh, it would be our compliance officer that initially was like hey guess what this this is you shouldn't be doing work because you don't have an issue permit and, and he had some guys on again being out of town he had guys on the site weren't aware. It, was, it came down, I think, to communication. So then it was after several iterations that then stopped. Sure. But I see that he did contact before he applied for a building permit. Had he not contacted first, does not the building permit trigger this sort of thing? I know, you know, when you do a larger thing, there's a historic. You mean, does a permit? He pulled a building permit on yes. November 29th. Is that, would that have put it on the radar if he hadn't contacted Prior, or would it just stay yeah. there until someone complains? Yeah, and that permit wasn't issued. It hasn't been issued yet because it has to go through this process first. Right. So is it in the city's process that it's already going to be picked up? Correct. He applies for something. It applies for it. It's it flagged. Flag. Yeah. It just has to be a complaint. Because he, he submitted for the permit and then began. Right. But that's so wrong beyond oh, the yeah. store. Look, that's correct. Yeah. 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 That, that, that clears things up a lot. It's like yeah. when you when you put it in that context, then what, what could you have done? Not started construction until you had a permit, right? Like yeah. Right. Because it was flagged, right? Like it's not like process work exactly. You should he went for a permit, it got flagged, it came to you, no permit is issued, and he's like, go tell us. Right. You got to schedule it. Right. That's, yeah. you're, I mean, I'm trying to be a little less. Yes. Oh, but I mean, this happens all the time. I mean, you know, like, <laughs> just I have just have have yeah, we, we know, like this happens in every, you know, it happens in construction all the time. And, yeah. and there's risk involved, and it's always owner's risk. They understand. You have a certain amount of work you can do until the first, you know, hoping that the permit gets issued, and then, you know, you can frame the entire interior of a space. Permit gets issued, they call for inspection the next day. Right? Yeah, you're like, wow. It's a miracle. <laughs> yeah, like it's, they did it all yeah. overnight. Yeah. So, yeah, I think, yeah, that's it. Yeah, he was trying to get a lot of work done very quickly. Yeah. And, and in the winter. I know. Just in time to for the summer, man. Yeah, exactly. So it sounds like um, it sounds like our process is working well and that there is a, a good way to contact folks who have purchased a property. Yeah, you know, based on the comparison of what it was like when I first started working here. Um, so, yeah, it's working. Okay, great. Well, and, cool. and just for clarification, at least from county records, zoned this for five years. So it wasn't like the guy just bought it. So all of a sudden, didn't work. Didn't know. Oh, look at you. Look at you. Hey, well, I'm sorry. <laughs> Is that after the time? No. <laughs> No, but, yeah, right there. <laughs> okay, great, great. I think that um, kind of sums up the discussion item. Do you have anything else you want to bring up for any of the commissioners? Okay, great. Um, then I think we can move on to our next agenda item, which is going to be the officer report. So many, do I want to? <laughs> no, 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 no,
So I think most of you know, but I think it's safe to now we can officially announce because the reason I wanted the picture taken, which some of you missed. Our archaeology program is receiving a Heritage Excellence Award at the Oregon Heritage Conference in April. So and it happens to be on the date of our next regularly scheduled Landmarks Commission meeting, <laughs> which is why we're canceling. But uh, I know um, we're going to go. So if you, if anyone else is interested, please. Where's it? It's in, it's in Forest Grove. Oh. And the awards are going to be in Hillsborough. So, I, I, I know. That's where I go. <laughs> so we're going to drive together. Yeah. Okay, yeah. <laughs> anyway, and I'm also doing several sessions about our program. So, yeah. Anyway, that's all I have to share. And I'm starting field work um, next week, actually. Can't, is it next week? No, the following week. I'm taking next week off <laughs> to try to rest. I'm not going to Canada. It's just. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Oh, yes, Char that's you. <laughs> Commissioner Weathers. I just have a question. I, I heard it in passing that maybe it was right before the last meeting, but you had said there was an IDP incident, uh, event, whatever. Uh, yeah, discovery. Uh, yeah, at Bush Park before the last one. Uh, <laughs> Has there been a recent thing to discover anything? <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm not supposed to really talk about the specific locations. That's why I'm hesitating, Charles. <laughs> so I will just I mean, vaguely say yes, and it's been handled. And I routine, I actually had three or four in the last few weeks. And they've primarily been, I'll just generally say, historic in nature. And, and I will also say, that I am for the states, the the report, Salem Reporter. I want it, I almost completed statesman. <laughs> the Salem it's Reporter. Virginia Maxwell. The <laughs> report. I'm writing, uh, I'm time keeping with Andy. So Andy does uh, an article one month about um, just historic -y stuff related to our <laughs> Maxwell collection, the photos. And I do an artifact of the month. So that's where I feature. Uh, I don't know if you've seen it, I could share an artifact from, sometimes it's from inadvertent discoveries if they're in a public brand way. Um, it's part of our curation. I'll share some information, but I can share a publication. But I, I found some pretty cool things. I'm new to this, why is it a secret? Because under state law and federal law, you're not allowed to disclose the location of archeological sites or features. And it's because of the potential for meeting. So, unfortunately, it's about that. Can I ask? It was it discovered through like excavation, or did somebody say all four what? have been related yeah. to um, some variety of utility? And they they are stopping. They are stopping, which is great. Yeah. That's, no. That's so good. I'll tell you the other thing that's yeah. working well is that every. So two things. So I've been doing a lot of training with our public works groups who do a lot of work in the right of way, but also for every city permit that authorizes ground disturbing activity, we issue the IDP, the inadvertent discovery plan. And people are calling. That's great. Find it. That's it's great. What's not happening before you back? Oh gosh, no. <laughs> anyway, but yeah. That's all I have. Okay, great. Um, does anybody have anything else that they'd like to bring up? Cool. Great. Then I think we can go ahead and adjourn the March 21st, 2024 meeting. Good job with that tape. Good job. You know, it doesn't quite like the bar. Oh, yeah.